Hey guys, what's up? As you know, I'm always looking to make new things, experiment with computers, with my business, uh, with stuff in my life. And one of the things that I was quite a bit on back of my mind was to improve my YouTube channel. You know, till now it always one man show. I'm talking in front of you. Some of you understand what I'm saying, some is not, but we have some fun, right? But what I want to do, I want to actually expand and see if we can start getting guests and uh, bring people in the studio, have like a couple guys to talk about things. And uh, also I would like to bring um, some videos from the people who also in the modding community. It's not always possible to bring person right there because he probably lives like six hours on by plane on the other side of the continent. But still, we can cooperate and give you more content on how things can be done. You know guys, I'm not a big fan of uh, all computer tasks when you make computer modding. Uh, I'm not a big fan of painting. I don't really like doing sleeving or drill holes in a case. So, And to be honest with you, I'm not actually that good at it. I can, but there's tons of people who do fantastic job in those areas. So, to keep ball rolling, I asked uh, owner of casemodcontest.com, Hanover. He's a professional in painting to make a tutorial for me. At first, he said probably no, but to my surprise, he just went and shoot the video that he offered it for me to present to you. And this is 40 minutes, and I tell you guys, you watch this, you will know how to paint case from the beginning to the end. I personally learn a lot of things from it and I'm pretty sure you enjoy this video as well. The best thing from this video is actually not shot in you know perfect environment in some paint shop that nobody of us have actual real access. It was shot in a garage with all crap flying around. It was shown how to paint in such condition, how to remove all problems associated with uh, homemade so to speak do-it-yourself paint jobs. So I think it's a perfect tutorial and um, I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it. And this is just first of the series of videos I will bring to you which is not made by me and made by you guys who also make computers uh, behind the screen. Without further ado, let me introduce complete tutorial on how to paint computer side panel perfectly. Enjoy the show. First step in any paint job is making the surface as pristine as you can get it. So what I've got here is a relatively cheap electric palm sander with an 80 grit pad. And this happens to be a practice panel that I use for uh, test colors. When I get a new color, I'll uh, sand it down to bare metal and prime it and treat the primer and then spray a a base color on it to see what it looks like. So you can see I've already started and it comes off quite easy because it's just primer and a base color, no, no clear coat to gum up your pad or anything. But I can't stress enough through my own trial and error how important prepping the actual metal surface can be. So we'll start to sand it off and you see how easy it comes off.
can see it does take quite a while, but uh, if you have plenty of fresh pads, shouldn't be a problem to be able to knock your paint off. And, and most of us are going to start with a painted panel in the first place. Um, most of us, if you're uh, lucky enough to have bare aluminum or bare metal to start with, then um, you can uh, etch that with a primer or you can etch it with uh, you know, 320 or 600 grit sandpaper, something to give the primer a toehold to, to hold on to. Uh, so, prepping the surface panel is the uh, first part. And even though this is my practice test panel, it's going to be, you know, the same, it'll, it'll ring true for whatever you're doing. Um, in this case, the next primer to go on this is going to be a high build primer and then a, uh, and then an orange. Um, for an artist to come over and do some sketch work on. So, it's not that important that this thing's absolutely perfect, but it'll give you an idea of what you need to do when you're uh, stripping paint off of the panel and prepping the uh, bare metal for primer and then a base coat color. Okay, so we've got the top color and the primer sanded off down to pretty pretty close to a bare metal. And I've wiped it with a microfiber cloth. So the next thing you really want to do is clean it. And what I use and what's available to me close is Finish One product. So I'm just going to use a surface cleaner to take all uh, oils and any kind of impurity off the surface of the metal and get it ready for primer. So I just use a regular paper towel and we'll scrub it up. It doesn't take much. And since this again is a practice panel I'm not too concerned about it being absolutely perfect but I do want to go through some steps that I personally do when I paint metal. Okay, now the paper towel is going to actually leave some uh, fine particles on there, which we're actually going to take off with a tack rag. And a tack rag you can pick up at your local auto body shop, along with, uh, they deal with, like I, I use Napa a lot for all my products, primers, colors, cleaners, tack rags, stir sticks, cups, I mean, they've got it all down there, so it's kind of a one-stop shop. But there's a tack rag. It's a sticky, sticky uh, component to it. Real low residue after you after you use it. So what you want to do is just rub the tack rag on here, and that'll pick up any loose fibers. That's your rag or your paper towel left when you were using your cleaner. There's a lot of swirl marks and scratches. I've had this panel for about 10 years now, I think. And it's been around the block, you can see. I've, I've had several colors. And there, that's the reason I use a high build primer, because you'll actually start to fill in these crevices and you, it allows you to do quite a bit of sanding. and get your surface back smooth again. So basically you're just filling in all the little cracks and sand marks and scratches. And get your surface pretty flat. So I'd call that good there. And the next step would be shoot some primer on it. I do have a cross breeze in here and my camera is upwind. <laughs> so I think it's 
pretty protected. Not, Duplicolor is the primer I use if I'm shooting out of a can. In this case, I'm not using an HBLP gun and a compressor. I mean, a little tutorial with cans, fine. And for what's going to go on here. This type of primer is fine. And a lot of us are going to be using cans anyway. You know, not, not a lot of modders have the compressor and gun set up. And I'm right at the minimum temperature out here today. It's 60 in the garage. Uh, 61. And my minimum temperature on here is 60, so right at the minimum. Yeah, that's looks okay. Nice light coat to start with, nothing too heavy. Of course, you're going to get stuff land in it. Don't freak out because we're going to sand it. One of the natural instincts to do, I think, right away is try and get it wet paint or wet primer. Let it dry. You know, you see little particles, little dust fuzzies land in your wet paint. Leave it. Don't touch it. Let it dry. And in this case, a primer is really easy to work with. Um, once you start sanding, all the all your high points are going to come off. Anything that landed in it is going to be a high point to the surface. And that's pretty good for the first coat. You don't want to get too crazy. You usually want to go with a couple light coats. And I think I have one particle land right there. That's no big deal. We can sand it off later. So we'll let this one dry for uh, you know 20, 30 minutes, and uh, we'll see where we're at after that. All right, case mod fans, Saint freaks. Been about half an hour, 35 minutes or something. So we're going to take a 320 block and just lightly take off. That big chunk there, a couple of little dust particles that landed on it. And that build primer really did, even the first coat, you can tell it uh, filled in a lot already, just on the very first one. So what I'm going to do is sand in one direction, basically move my block in one direction. And a flat surface like this, it's nice to have a a flat surface, not using your your hands and a piece of sandpaper, you get uneven pressure and you'll sand unevenly. What we want to do is, is have a nice flat surface to, to sand this. So we'll start and that dust came right off. That particle's gone already. So, like I said earlier, when you're, when you're painting and you see stuff land in your primer, it's not a big deal. Don't, don't try and get at it right away. Just uh, wait for things to dry and uh, sanding is your friend. Just remember that. So, And once again, this is a practice panel, it's not a real critical critical thing to have absolutely perfect but I do want to take the, the primer down pretty nice and this will help when you sand primer like this it helps uh, get rid of any kind of uh, orange peel effect you'll have when you start laying color down. If you don't treat primer and you're actually going for that orange peel effect, it's pretty easy to get. So 
But if you want a mirrored, gloss, smooth, super smooth surface, taking your primer down and, and taking your time sanding it will give you that result. Will give you an absolute perfect um, top coat of color. You can see, I can see the waves in this metal because I have some low spots and some high spots right on the end where things have bent. That's not really a big concern at this point. But if you're, if you're, if you've got a case and you're, and you're painting it, then you're going to want to pay attention to details like this. You're really going to want to take your time in the prep. Uh, that'll yield the, the best uh, overall finished product for you. So you can see, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up or not, but I do have a low spot right there where the block, the flat block, is not hitting the primer, so it's remaining. I'm just going to leave that. I don't really care about that too much. The purpose of this video is to kind of showcase what I do. You know, I'm self-taught, too. You know, and, uh, I've done a lot of reading and research and just kind of trial and error. And taught myself how to paint. Made a lot of mistakes. It's going to happen. But after a while you learn, you learn, you know, you'll develop your own style, how to do things. And I normally wear uh, nitro gloves, I don't like that. Any kind of cleaners or paints on my hands. Keep your block moving the same way. This should come out pretty nice. You can see I've already hit, there's a high spot right there. I've already gone into the metal again. Now, clean it up. I'll just use a microfiber rag. Super smooth. And then I'll just hit it with a tack rag. So it looks pretty good. <clears throat> Not bad. Let's hit it with a track uh, tack rag real quick. Picking up all those goodies that we don't want on there. Still have a nice breeze coming through the garage, so I'll probably do just one last coat of primer on here and that'll be it. But I put down.
on a nice surface there for the first one. So. Have my can sitting in the sun, so it's uh, pretty warm. Should come out nice. Temperature's still about 60 in here. One last coat. So I'm going to go a little heavier because this is going to be my last one. I'm going to stay somewhere between six to eight inches away. And this should yield a pretty nice base for me to shoot some color on. Actually, it looks pretty good. With one little drop right there, but it's no big deal because we're going to sand it again. One little particle there. As far as I can see, that's it. So if you don't have a nice fancy paint booth or something like that, you're out in the garage, in the, in the elements, with the can, just remember, let it dry, you can sand it down to a nice smooth finish, it'll take all the dust off, any drips you may have had come out of the tip inadvertently well that looks pretty good really not bad so we'll let that dry another half hour and we'll put a nice little sand on it with 320 maybe a 600 I use a lot of 3m products this is a, a 600 grit so nice and fine, that'll really make your primer nice and smooth and take away any kind of a peel effect you'd have if you, if you didn't treat your primer correctly. You're going to have a lot of uh, hills and valleys in it and that'll really get magnified when you shoot color down on it. So the better your primer surface, the smoother, just like glass, try and get this like glass, the better that um, color is going to go on and look. It looks super smooth and you should be really happy with your final results. If you took the time and had the patience, that's one big thing I had to learn is just don't touch it until it's dry. And Sanding is always going to be your friend. It'll take your imperfections out of it. And even in your color stage, we can do some color sanding, which will go up around uh, 2000 grit wet sand. And any kind of little dust, you know, you're, if you're at it again and you get little particles land in your color coat, don't panic. I mean, you can. Get out your 2000, let it dry, and I, I would suggest maybe even eight hours, you know, um, maybe 24 hours um, before you hit it, before you try and wet sand um, any kind of dust off. But once you start wet sanding color, you have to, what I've learned is you gotta, you gotta wet sand the whole thing. You just can't do a spot here and there because it's gonna change the overall look of it. Um, that's just my my thoughts on it. Um, so once, if you're gonna color sand, do the whole thing. It can be done. All right then. All right, peeps, we're back. Sun's starting to set. Uh, I've dropped a couple degrees. 
but uh, nothing too critical. So we'll take the final sand real quick here. And I can see I've only got a well, one, one little, well, two, two little dust particles. And they just come right off, no problem. It actually looks really good. So the 320 real quick, 320 grid block. Just to take that high stuff off. straight to some 600. And what I'll do is I'll rip it. So We'll just take the 600 real quick. We have left mm, a little bit. The surface looks pretty good. Let's see if we can catch that. Get some fuzzies. Get rid of those. It's okay. Start shooting a little color on it. I think I'm going to shut this door. lighting conditions out here in the garage. But good enough. 
So, custom mixed filled aerosol can. Warm. Stay nice thin first coat, real light. To avoid any kind of runs, grips, errors. Now this this stuff's got about a 10 minute pre-coat window. landed in it yet. Surprise, surprise. Let's shoot one more light one real quick. Go light with it. Avoid your avoid any kind of runs. Go light. And I can see a particle landed in it already. That's no big deal because we're going to color sand. Nice smooth even strokes. Trying to keep the same hand speed. I have left. Uh, it's not too bad. I think you guys can still see it. Keep your paint shaking. Some real, real fine stuff has landed in there. But well, that's a big chunk right there. Yikes. And that's a big fuzzy right there, too. No big deal, though, because we are going to color sand. And that will probably be in the morning. We won't just let this dry overnight. Inside, about 70 degrees. See all the dust in there. Jeez. Not too concerned though.
That's probably the only. Well, I, after I wet sand it, I'll probably put one more light coat on it. But if everything works out tomorrow. Uh, that's a big chunk there. That's really depressing. If this was a finished panel, I'd be, I'd be bumming. But like I said, wet sanding can do miracles. Yeah, I can see a couple. You just can't get away from dust landing on stuff. Unless you've got some clean room somewhere, which I doubt. Most of us are painting in the garage or outside. Or but we'll let that sit. And dry. Probably move it inside here in about 20 minutes, half hour. So that's that. And then tomorrow we'll uh, we'll cover some wet sand and hopefully some fine artwork. All right, paint freaks, case modders. Yesterday I wound up uh, with the last of the color coat on it and now we're actually going to cover a little bit of wet sanding because I have a couple of little fuzzies that are in it and I'm just going to demonstrate the use of uh, 2000 wet sandpaper, 2000 grit, my block a little bit of water. So a nice flat surface again. Just keep the area a little wet. And we'll go to town with a little bit of sanding. And like I said yesterday, earlier in the video, if you're going to wet sand, just wet sand the whole thing. This will take off any of those high point uh, dusties you have on your color. Make sure to keep your surface hydrated. Now even though this is a practice panel, just demonstrating the how I wet sand. I'm still moving in one direction with the block. And I'll shoot this again with the uh, with my color after this is dried. All my dust is gone. Especially that one big chunk I had. So hopefully later today I'll have my artist over here to start doing a little bit of character work. This will be his test panel. And we'll see what he comes up with. Actually, that one spot is still there. Boy, that was a big piece. This is great for uh, if you shoot clears or if you get drips or runs in your paint 
wet sanding is really helpful for taking that out taking those runs out if you got a little bit too heavy a little heavy handed with your paint you're going to get them runs or drips you don't want that and then clear as well can run if you got a little heavy with it still see that little bit of imperfection right there it's almost the, I shaved the top off of it but it's embedded down there a little bit because I shot over it which I probably shouldn't have done I should have waited if you're on a finished panel and you're starting to shoot color be patient in between each coat which I really didn't do yesterday because I was kind of in a hurry you know for purposes of shooting the video took me all day anyway but in between each color stage if you have the patience wet sanding out your imperfections on each one will help and you won't be putting paint on top of a, of a high spot like I did yesterday and I can still see that in there now doing this will, I, will also aid in your uh, final color coat the smoothness of it the uh, the overall gloss effect so any dust you would have had or anything during each coat really comes off when you wet sand like I said, it all comes to down on how it all boils down to how much of a perfectionist you are with color. Or, you know, a lot of guys will just shoot paint and then be done with it. They won't take the time to to go through each little step to make things perfect. But when it comes to paint, I've kind of gotten to be a, a, a slightly a perfectionist. So that's wet sanding. Then we'll take a uh, microfiber rag. And I've gotten that. Down pretty flat. That big fuzzy I had. almost gone I had to go kind of down deep into the color to get it just remember to keep your surface wet don't let the sandpaper dry out and start burning through the color a lot more if you do that Even though this is just a practice panel, just trying to cover all the uh, steps I go through. Then just simply take a rag.
and dry it off. perfectly flat right now. All that dust I had on there yesterday is gone. And I'll shoot one more little light coat of color on it. And then uh, the last part of the video we'll shoot will be a, a character drawing on here. Yep, looks pretty good. Alright then. Okay, so after this morning's wet sand, here's the final product. I'm trying to do this through the viewfinder. looks absolutely beautiful nice even coat little fuzzies here in the corner but no big deal and that's the panel after a uh, sand down to bare metal cleaner Primer, a sand with 320, another coat of high build primer, a sanding with 320 and 600, and then uh, coats of color, and wet sand, and one final little light coat of color. So, it's ready. To have some artwork done to it which I don't think is gonna happen today so we'll just cap this one off like this I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the tutorial on how I paint that's a beautiful orange color it really changes color a lot when you when you move it around but that's a high quality paint for sure it's not like Krylon or Rust-Oleum or anything. This is custom mixed automotive paint and uh, loaded into an aerosol can. And I think for my next video, what I'll try and do is uh, get a little bit of a tutorial or a how-to and show how I uh, mix and use my um, HVLP gun with the compressor and Maybe we'll start with an etch primer on some uh, metal back plates from uh, Heat Killer. And we'll get a tutorial on painting stainless. Uh, can be done. So, alright then. Till next time.